Well, that is what everyone needed to see. What a win for the Flyers over the Rangers. Welcome into Post Game Live, presented by Curado Insurance. Ashley Sullivan, Scott Hartnell, Al Morgani here with you. Scott's got the Penguins game on his, on his phone because <laughs> this matters again. And that's the moral of the story. For everyone that said that this team had quit and fallen over, and rightfully so to believe that, they shut everyone up with this performance. So you're saying there's a chance, There's Al. a chance. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just a great effort. Uh, you know, Everyone played all 20 guys. Uh, Sam Harrison had a heck of a game. Uh, in the net and uh, just just their attention to detail for me defensively offensively through the neutral zone it was just a just a layered attack uh, for 60 minutes and we haven't seen that in a long time yeah really everybody gets involved Arison was terrific Konechny got hot again yep. Hathaway blocks a shot with his back to get them in <laughs> uh, the coach jug juggles some lines get things going early Couturier made a great play there was so much like the best team in the league the Rangers all they did only scored one on a five on three and no basically no shots in that third period yeah it was it was great. They locked it down, and they're playing offense, and they capitalize on their opportunities as well. The last few games, they've they've had some chances, but haven't been in the back of the net tonight. They they capitalize on the majority of the chances. Yes, and we are monitoring these games, and we'll give you the standings when this is updated. It's on Scott's phone right now, so we'll know when you know what happens with these standings. But the moral of the story is the Flyers are somewhat back in this playoff race. A lot of things have to go right, and something that is significant but not really is beating the Rangers finally. But it doesn't even seem like that's the biggest news of this show right now. Well, I, I called it before the game. You lose all these to the Ugh. opponents that you should be uh, winning, right? To Montreal twice, Buffalo, Columbus, Chicago. Uh, you get spanked by all those teams and you come into a, a powerhouse like the Rangers are and you absolutely dominate them for 60 minutes. So that's, that's how weird this hockey world is, Al. Anyone yeah. can beat anyone and, and you think they're down and out and now they're back. Yeah, the two bookends are you beat the Bruins and the Rangers. <laughs> and two of the best teams in the league. And and you did it with, I mean, they really needed this. And, and you could tell after that game in Montreal, there was a level of embarrassment, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the coach says you got to get your dignity back and they come back and play this kind of game, this was uh, much needed, not just for even tonight, but for even long term to have this kind of get back into it with the Flyers hat. Talk about a response, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, Danny B wasn't happy. Uh, you know, I, I think he went into the locker room after the game in Montreal. Uh, you know, I think uh, let, let the guys have it and they come out and respond like this. So it, it's huge for them as a growing, uh, as an organization together right now. That, that's huge. Yes, you feel so much better about where this Flyers team is right now after this game. Let's take you through how we got here, and it all starts with Cam York. And I love about this Flyers team in this game, Scott, is it was scoring by options here. And, and speed, right? Uh, you speed, you, you pull up, a guy goes down, and, and you find that open guy, the fourth man on the attack. He comes out there and absolutely labels that one top shelf. But just the speed out from defense through the neutral zone, and they scored on a rush finally again. You come down off the rush and get that thing going. Blows a tire there because of the way you're playing and another Ranger goes spinning. So two Rangers spinning and on the ice. So that's a real good sign. And then, of course, that great finish right there to get that lead and get the energy going again. And then you have Panarin, and this is well, huge because we've seen this happen where they would combust after this out. Yeah, and this is, you know, you give them two-man advantage. That's just too good a team uh, to kind of play tic-tac-toe the way they did. And at this point, there was the... Here was the risk mm -hmm. that they get back in the game here. It's like, oh, no, here we go again. You know, we gave them that opportunity and they took advantage of it. This is where you have to know. Are they going to, you know, the Flyers going to fall apart at this point? All this comeback, but they held in tight. And then the, the, uh, we thought, <laughs> well, I kind of thought maybe this would be the, the end of it because it was two seconds left. They still had a minute yep. 40 on the power play. And then Bobby Brink gets that, that, that early goal in the second period. Uh, got a nice deflection off of uh, the Ranger defenseman there. You see how happy they are, the smiles, everything like that. But you know, Bobby Brink has, has definitely elevated his game as well. Oh, absolutely. He played a terrific game. That was the you know, skate to stick there to get it going, and then Palin go through the front. They got a break on a, on a uh, deflection right there. But they took advantage of the break. And, uh, boy, it was just so good. You could just you, you could visually see every, the, all the pressures going off. as they. Also, Scott, I just think they played more offensive. Like, they didn't sit back. You know how they say, like, safe as death? They they went right at somebody and, this and time. They didn't stop for, yes. for the whole, you know, even the third period. You got the 2-1 lead, you got the 3-1 lead. They wanted more. They wanted to put my, their pedal down and, and keep going, keep skating. And uh, it just seemed like they, everyone had their legs uh, tonight. They were making smart decisions with the puck. Uh, when you need to get it out of the zone, you got it out. You didn't try and make a cute little play in your D zone. Mm -hmm. Then it's in the back of your net. So it, they played a real smart game. 
uh, you know, just proud of how they kind of responded after, you know, a bad eight in a row. Big time. And Scott Lawton told us at practice this week that the biggest thing he felt what was wrong with that eight game skate was that they were not playing aggressive enough. They were waiting for teams to come to them to make a play. We saw such a difference in that. And that leads us to our PA lottery winning moment of the game. And that is Travis Konechny getting on board. And you really needed to see this out. Yeah, he really did. He's been frustrated with things here. And just the, uh, the, the defensive play that he makes to strip the puck, Scott, and then get it going the other way. Yeah, and, and this is another. They have four guys back, but, you know, if, uh, everyone's puck watching, right? Yep. You're all looking at Ryan Paling, who has that puck. Here's the stick lift you're Whoa. talking about now. That's a, that's a great play defensively. And then just attack. The defenseman adds an attack. He's driving that. And here's TK, you know, kind of had tickling the rafters with a stick there. He wanted it so bad. And a nice little shot far side. So uh, it's just kind of awesome. This is another battle won here by Sean Couture. Your captain gets it to Noah Cates. And what to do? He takes it to the paint. And a beautiful shot there, low blocker. Yeah, Couture makes a real good play on that board. And look at the excitement level. And everybody kind of, there it is right there, the play that sends it up the boards and then cut inside, beat the goaltender. And at this point, there was no, I, I, that's a really good play by Cates coming up the boards. Yeah, nice little move there too as well. Just kind of showing the who's talked about. You change the angle of that puck, bring it to the middle of the ice, a better angle to shoot that puck. You get a little elevation over that the far pad and uh, you just see the, the the step and then the smiles, right? Mm -hmm. We've been seeing smiles on their faces and in, in a eight games while, either yeah. with us as well, yes. trying to talk about it. It's, it's pretty impressive though. Bit of a difference here and a lot of times in that winless skid and, and really in the gauntlet we talked about, it was so back and forth, right? That's what we've seen really the past month with this Flyers team. So to be able to put it away and keep your foot on the gas was huge in today's game. And the Rangers are a great comeback team yeah. too. Mm -hmm. they, they never quit, right? Uh, and they got the firepower to score goals almost at will. So uh, to just kind of take their chances, take their time and space away. Uh, the shot blocking you could see tonight and, uh, you know, not to you know throw something towards his face, but that was not a soft team tonight. They no, that was, hard. Not, that was not yeah, a soft was, team. And it was just a great response. And I think the Rangers tr thought they could toy with them early because they were trying to make perfect plays, probably watching what had happened previously mm -hmm. and the Flyers would have none of it. Yeah. And Noah Cates was one of the goal scorers in this huge win over the Rangers. Let's go back to New York and hear from Noah Cates at Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah, I mean, I just want to help your team, and especially this time of year and position we're at. Um, you know, personally, to step up, it feels pretty good. Um, obviously, getting the win tonight's huge. Um, yeah, we just got to keep winning, keep, keep you know, playing that game. We hit rock bottom there in, in um, Montreal, so only up from there, and just worrying about ourselves and getting two points in these last two games. What was the process the team went through after that loss in Montreal in terms of meetings, getting everything back on the same page? What did you guys do, really, after that game? Um, I think just kind of looked in the mirror um, obviously we knew the prior games you know we were you know not we were trying to find it and then that one um, you know really really was rock bottom like I said and kind of we just looked in the mirror and you know wanted a better effort um, I think we you know mentally weren't there especially you know playing maybe teams that we thought were below us in the standings um, you know we got to take advantage of those teams so uh, I'm glad we stepped up against one of the top teams in the league and it kind of shows where we're at and um, you know what we've done all year with this group. Travis Connect he looked like he kind of had a swagger to him tonight how, how much did he really lead the way? Oh he's He's been huge when he's playing like that and in your face, finishing checks. Uh, it just leads, brings everyone into the battle. So he's he's such a good leader for this team when he's playing like that. And um, obviously when he's finishing, making plays, uh, you know, he gets everyone going. Not to say that like you guys were playing great, but also that the luck really hadn't been going your way these last few weeks. When you see Bobby Brings score that goal, goes off the Rangers stick, does the bench kind of breathe a sigh of relief that it might finally start to be turned for us? Yeah, for sure. Um, some big saves early, too. We got that all year, and then, you know, maybe luck or whatever it was um, the last couple games where we weren't getting that. Then, yeah, like you said, a nice bounce. So uh, just to get a lead or whatever it was early. So, um, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. So I think that's kind of what I believe and what, you know, just happens in this weird game. So uh, it was nice to get some bounces, but you can't rely on them, obviously. There's been a lot of talk about you guys for <coughs> six, maybe playing a little too tight. And then Travis connecting when we spoke with him earlier today. So we just have to go back to getting to having fun. Is that kind of what happened tonight a little bit, playing a little looser? Maybe? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think TK's pretty good at staying loose before the games. He's he's always cracking jokes and, you know, making me laugh at least. But um, I think that's when you're playing your best hockey and um, kind of like we were saying, we're back to being the underdogs, um, kind of where people thought we were at or counting us out. So um, back to kind of where we felt comfortable and, um, you know, playing against one of the top teams in the league, like I said, uh, everyone's doubting us and, you know, we stepped up and had a great effort.